Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, What is going to happen to your enemy? What is going to happen to your enemy? As much as we don't want to see someone suffer immensely as a result of the evil that they've done to us or to others, it is inevitable for an enemy to be cursed, defiled, shamed, sickly, prematurely, even. I, for one, know that those individuals who were wicked, and I mean, they did some really messed up things, as well as those who, for some of you all, eh, that's not really all that bad. They did suffer. Some of the suffering we did not see, but we heard about. And others, they suffered in front of us, okay? Whether it was tubes up their nose, whether they were out there uh, in the news, in the media, because of some things they did, ended up going to jail. The point is, is that there was some suffering that took place. Uh, there, were, there was much loss. And some of you all, you are starting to notice or get a glimpse of some bad things that's happening to your enemy. There was the loss. There was the loss of finances, the loss of marriage. There was the children who no longer speak to them. Um, there was, uh, the spouse who died. Um, there were, uh, accidents, um, things that happened that forced them to relocate or move. A lot of negative things happen to people who just don't want to be good people, righteous people, people who want to listen and obey the creator, <laughs> right? They claim that they know God or they claim that they're good people, but we can't tell. They say that they're going to do what's right, but they don't want to do what's right. The minute they're confronted on their wrongs, they don't want to own up to them and they don't want to make any changes. They're always talking about what other people are doing, but they never want to deal with the fact that, yes, I am messed up. I don't do what's right. Part of walking this walk as tough as it is, is that you've got to be the one that humbles yourself and says, I'm not right. And I need to get right with the one true God. So your enemy who's prideful, who thinks he or she's better than everyone else, who thinks that because they have a lot of money or degrees or because they've got a nice house or cars or whatever, this one who has created all sorts of problems, whether near or far. And the type of problems that I'm talking about are problems that are decades, decades long. The type of problems that have provoked children to wrath, the types of problems that have caused folks to disassociate due to their torturous ways or abusive ways. The types of things that they've done, such as lie, steal, cover up, shame, or even blame, didn't want to, you know, take responsibility for what they did at a workplace or elsewhere. You know, these individuals, they are under this false assumption that they'll never get caught. You know, they'll never have to pay a price for all the evil that they've done. Something in their mind reasons that, well, I did these things because. Why are you treating her this way? Well, the reason why I'm treating her this way is because she did A, B, and C. Well, why did you treat your last companion that way? Well, it was because she was this, that, and the other. Well, why did you treat the companion before that that way? Well, because she said, okay, do you notice a pattern in my example? The individual is blaming and he's never taken any type of responsibility for why woman one, woman two, woman three behaved in the way that they behaved. A woman or a man who's abused or disrespected or mistreated long enough is not going to continue to be nice and considerate and you know, polite and loving and whatever else that you want that person to be. 
it's not going to happen. So we've got this group of individuals who some of you all have described as narcissistic, others psychopathic, right? We've got this group of individuals who are children of darkness that I've described in past audio. And now it is time to deal with the fact that he or she is no longer going to get away with what they got away with. Because I say deal with the fact because some folks, as I've said in other audio, make excuses for the enemy because they're still worried, still fearful that the enemy is going to pay them back. They fear the enemy more than they would ever fear God. But I'm here to say, no, you need to put your, if you're going to be fearful, you need to put your fear in the right (laughs) direction. And that's what the one true God, the one who can, uh, you know, bless you as well as curse you rather than some man or some woman who's feeble, uh, who, (laughs) who's aging every day. There's a hell. Okay. And I've talked about this in other audio and I'm going to expound upon this as it relates to the enemy reaping what he or she has sown. There is a hell. There's a hell for the serial killer, right? There's a hell for the uh, person who has stolen. uh, There's a hell for the liar. There's a hell for all these different people. Revelation 21, 8, but as for the cowardly, right? There's even a hell for them. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, even liars, yes, even liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So there's the first death, right? Everybody showed up at the funeral. Okay. Looked over the casket. There was your knee, there was your, uh, dear brother, cousin who at, who, you know, who you love so much. Right. But there was somebody who was abused by that dear brother, sister, cousin, whoever. There was somebody who knew them better than you could ever know them. And if that dearly beloved in that casket was cowardly, faithless, detestable, a murderer, whether you knew it or not, sexually immoral, a sorcerer, an idolater, or a liar. Oh, every time you turn around coming up with a lie. That second death took place. And that is that lake that burns with fire and sulfur. The understanding is that hell is in the lower parts of the earth. And as I've mentioned in other audio, those who have tapped into the spiritual realm heard people tormented, heard yelling and screaming, heard horrific things. So it's not a nice place. And God created it. Matthew 10, 28, and do not fear those, right? Remember, I had made reference to fear. We got some folks who fear the enemy to the point where they'll stand in front of the enemy and take a bullet for the enemy. There are those who fear the enemy so much that they will give their firstborn over to the enemy. Will even lie on other people just to save themselves because they're scared of what the enemy might do. Once again, you better put your fear in the one true God, Matthew 10, 28, and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Okay. And God put Lucifer on assignment. That's his hell. And he absolutely loves torturing folk. He tortures the, tortures them on this side and he tortures them on the other side. Matthew 25, 46, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. As long as you're righteous, this message does not have anything to do with where you're going. But when you're unrighteous, this message has everything to do with you. Because once again, we got some folks who think, who are thinking that they're not getting a butt whipping and that I'm just crazy. And I don't know what I'm talking about. And you know, you need to look at you and your family and whatever else. See, of course they don't want me to speak the truth. 
So they're going to be critical. They're going to be disrespectful. They're going to call me a name or two. They're going to nitpick on messages like this because once again, the abuser, the user, the pimp, the player, the hustler, and the Bible says cowardly, faithless, adulterers, you know, murderers, all these types of people, they don't want you to know that their butt whooping is coming. I am not <laughs> doomsday prophet every now and again. And sometimes the message doesn't go over too well with some people because they're looking for the feel good. They're looking for, tell me something that's wonderful. That something that is going to put some money in my pockets. Can I get that message? Those messages were done a long time ago, <laughs> but we got some messages these days that are about the butt whipping that's coming to, to the enemy who has created all sorts of problems. Uh, the butt whipping that's coming to the enemies in families. They didn't want to believe us when, when we were talking to them in the calm voice, when we were sitting around the table, when we were sitting there, uh, you know, handing them things, right? Giving them service or giving them gifts. They didn't want to believe that uh, what we were warning them about or what they needed to stop doing uh, was going to cause them much heartache later. They didn't want to believe it. And so those same ones where life seems where, where life was easy at one point is only getting harder for them. The butt whipping comes to some of them through all those aches and pains in their bodies. You got negativity in the heart and it begins to spread throughout the body. Now every part of your body is achy and no matter what you take, the aches, only temporarily go away and then they come back well just imagine being in a lake of fire you complaining now <laughs> but God in all his love and mercy and kindness he's trying to keep people out of that place he really is and he uses you know the most unlikeliest people places things signs wonders to get their attention but yet for some they're so hard-headed and stubborn they don't want they don't want to see the light they don't want to do what's right. They continue to run from the truth. The truth is, is that the marriage is not going to last. The truth is, is that the children are not going to be the best adults growing up because of the things that some parents and grandparents have done. The truth is, is that the one who continues to tell the lies and continues to cover up and be secretive that he or she is going to lose much as a result and folks are not going to continue to give and folks are not going to continue to honor and respect a lot of these folks who are like this the murderers the sexual immoral sorcerers idolaters liars their lives look good don't they we see it right there in mainstream media looks good looks like they are on top of the world they'll even tell you oh I feel good I feel wonderful I'm so blessed I mean they'll even use you know Christian words to describe all this good that's happening to them and the Lord he told me he said that what goes up comes down he said that what they consider is a blessing is going to turn into a curse he said that He's not blind to what these folks have done from the White House to the boardroom. He knows and he gives these people ample opportunity to make wrongs right. And when they choose not to, there is no protection for them, Lord Jesus. I mean, even the serial killer, he got ample opportunity to get his act together, <laughs> right? He hasn't been caught yet. But he's got this insatiable desire to go back out there and kill some more. So at some point, he gets caught. At some point, those that he loves or his favorites end up reaping the consequences of what he's done or continues to do. Why is all this bad stuff happening to my family members, to my pets, to whatever? Because you don't want to get right. You see? We get those who question, stop the questioning and just get what you got hiding in darkness out, move it away, get rid of it. Stop holding on to it. Stop doing it. You see ample opportunity to get it right before that butt whipping is coming. 
Revelation 20.10, and the devil who had deceived them, because we know ultimately who's behind all of the evil, right? <laughs> I mean, people got their choices, but we also know that the devil has his uh, minions that provoke some folk. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire, because he going down there too, and sulfur, where the beasts and the false prophets were and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever this is coming up and this particular scripture is going to resound all over the world in the future some of us may not live to see it play out romans 6 23 for the wages of sin is death but what the free gift of god is eternal life in christ jesus our lord so as long as one chooses to keep sinning right there's death ahead. There's that second death. There's the fiery lake. Okay. But if I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, right? That, that's somebody's truth. Come on. Then you mean to tell me that I'm going to be all right? Absolutely. But you got to also turn away from the sin though, you see, right? You know what you need to do, but you got to also be proactive in doing it. Revelation 20, 15, and if anyone's name was not found, listen to this, written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. This is what is ahead, you see. Prophets of yesteryear talked about what is ahead. Matthew 25, 41 says, then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Some folks say, you be really believe that? Absolutely, I believe it. Once again, if you've been close to your own death, <laughs> you got a different perspective. If you've never been close to death and you don't look at God as a father, he's just a creator or something far away or what have you. Scriptures like this don't resonate with you. You see, but when I decided while I was in college, right? <laughs> and I say it like that because college, it pumps out so many prideful, arrogant people who think they know everything that you lose sight of the supernatural, of the paranormal. You lose sight of um, just life. <laughs> You're so busy chasing after money and relationships and what makes you feel good, right? <laughs> that you, you know, tintillating your five senses, you're so busy with that, that you don't think about these sorts of things until something crazy happens <laughs> and there's no explanation until something supernatural takes place, until you feel like there's a monkey on your back or a ghost following you or I can't seem to shake this thing. Mm. And no matter what drugs or alcohol or what prescription medicine you take, you just can't seem to get it together. Hmm. Now is the time to take God seriously and accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus. But God, he is not going to accept anybody and everybody into his heaven. And that's a false gospel that some folks have been spreading. That ain't happening. I already covered that scripture. There's a fiery lake for some people. And that is what's happening to that enemy of yours. Okay. You might not see it now, but it's coming. They may even get through this life with their name in lights. Their children blessed, their wife, husband, everybody feeling good, right? But then they got a second death coming to them. Mm, mm, mm. And they can't come back to warn us though. That's what's twisted. They can't come back to warn us or talk to us or have that type of relationship with us. They don't have the type of emotions that we have on this side any longer. You know, um, all of what they did to appease their senses on this side, right? Feel, taste, touch, smell, all that good stuff, right? They can't do any of that on the other side. Their senses are burned, <laughs> so to speak. All they can do is feel the mean, the, the anger, the, the resentment, the bitterness, the torture, all these negative emotions. They don't get to rest. None of it. 
Matthew 5, 22, but I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother, right, will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. Once again, there's a hell of fire for people who do this sort of thing. Revelation 14, 11, and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, right? This is what's happening in Sheol and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever and they have no rest day or night. These worshipers of the beast, right? And we got plenty. I don't even know why this influx of, of, of folks worshiping the beast took place other than they tell me it's the last days, they being believers, uh, you know, including myself, it's the last days, it's in the scriptures too. So these worshipers of the beast and its image and whoever receives the mark of his name. So there's a torment for these individuals while they appear advertising the beast, talking about the beast, taking oaths for the beast, signing blood contracts with the beast, having people walking around with a beast head. Mm. Second Thessalonians one nine, they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord. Okay. And from the glory of his might to be away from the Lord. There is no sign of goodness. There is no sign of goodness, righteousness, fairness, nothing. Nobody's listening to your prayers. Nobody cares less. <sighs> Matthew 13, 50, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And once again, some of those people who chase after ghosts and listen to spirits, they heard weeping, <sighs> somebody crying, and they heard what sound like a beast and gritting, right? No, <sighs> that type of stuff, uh-huh. Second Peter two, four, for if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. That's Sheol. That's Sheol. Some people meant well on this side, but didn't be obedient to the one true God. Darkness is what they see near in death, darkness. And then eventually they end up in that lake of fire. Jude 1 7, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities. And we know about Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Some of you all, if you don't know, do some research because some folks have even described our nation as being just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. So contrary to what you heard and what movements are out there, this is truth. Sorry to be the messenger of bad news, but it is what it is. That is why I will respect folk and their views and their opinions, but I am not getting in the bed with them because to get in the bed with them is to also say that you agree that you're okay, that you're all right with them. And when you are, you also are going to suffer the consequences right along with them. And some of your enemies who live certain lifestyles, they want some folks to help them. They want some folks to get them out of their, you know, depression and upset and all the stuff that they've said and done. We can't do that. They suffering on this side and they suffering on the other side. John three sixteen through 18, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already. Okay, this is Bible. Don't shoot the messenger because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. I don't know how many times we got to keep preaching messages like this, but it is what it is. 
And your enemy who doesn't believe in God, doesn't want to be associated with God, prefers to be in bed with the devil and his minions, wants to run around here chasing after dead spirits or believing that some dead spirits are protecting him or her, believing that they got the upper hand on anybody and everybody, choosing to say that they're blessed when really they're cursed. There is, once again, this hell forum. And sometimes they feel like they are experiencing hell on earth. Yeah, if I'm not having any type of faith, I guess that's what it is, says that one that's suffering. But they put on airs, don't they? They, they protect themselves. They put on fronts. They're real fake. They're troubled in mind, body, and spirit, as I've said in other audio. And they don't want to... They don't want to be free. And for those who don't want to be free, once again, I can't help you. Well, you could pray for me. I could pray for you, but, and then some folks I've prayed for and still no change. Why? Because God, he don't hear them. He don't see them because they don't hear him and they don't see him. So to speak, right? None of us have seen God, but God has signs. He's got wonders. He's got things that he does. And he's like, wake up, man. Wake up, woman. I'm right here. Can you see me? Can you see the effort that I'm putting in to bring you out of your torment? I don't see nothing. Okay, you know what? Bye. <laughs> what, what, what do some of the kids say? Bye, Felicia. Revelation 20, 14, then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. Mark 9, 43 through 48. And if your hand causes you to sin, what are we supposed to do? Cut it off. What? What do you mean cut off my hand? I'm not encouraging you to do that. I'm just reading scripture. But it's a good a good thought in terms of this next point. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell to the unquenchable fire and if your foot causes you to sin cut it off it is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell and if your eye causes you to sin tear it out it is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell where where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched maggots all over the body eating away at these individuals in this hell and there's no relief okay there's no relief mm, mm, mm. just think about that for a minute now we got some folks who okay i agree with that i'll cut my hand off my eye and everything else well, whoa don't do all of that no 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 you got a point but then what do they do after they do all of this? They go right back on the sinning. They go right back on the sinning. I can see if somebody does that and their mind has been changed, right? And their lifestyle has been changed or some unfortunate situation happened that changed them for the better. But you mean to tell me I didn't lost my eye, my hand, my foot, everything. And still I haven't learned nothing from that. And we got those too. Revelation 19, 20, and the beast was captured and with it, the false prophet who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived, right? This false prophet that every now and again we hear about is a deceiver by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped its image. See, in order to get these folks to do what they do, or in, uh, it, it was it was a deception that took place. It was a promise of goods and fame and fortune and what have you. That's what the enemy had on them. And now the enemy realizes, well, I guess this wasn't the best way about going or deceiving them into doing this, that, and the other, because now it's backfiring on me. See, that's the other thing that happens to the enemy is that there is a backfiring that takes place. What he thought he was doing, what she thought was going to help the populace or what have you, it backfired. And so us on the outside looking in, we see, oh my goodness, he's in trouble with God. <laughs> he lost all these different things. And now the plan that he had 
that was supposed to be so great, it has backfired. Mm Mm-hmm. Lord Jesus. Think about who these enemies are. Both great and both not so great. Large and small. Think about it. All these things are taking place and it's negative, it's ugly, it's mean, it's nasty. I mean, every negative word you can think of is happening to some of these folks while they still smiling. (laughs) And they think they're strong because they're smiling through the pain while they're wiping away tears. Lord Jesus. Some of you, I'm coming where you are. You got the enemy of a husband. And he believes that he's got the upper hand because he got this and because he knows this person and because he got, you know, the ear of his family members and all of that. And God says, but he doesn't have my ear. That's why he doesn't feel like his prayers are getting answered. He doesn't have my ear. That's why he's just getting by. He doesn't have my ear. That's why he can't seem to win when it comes to relationships or business. He doesn't have my ear. His children don't respect him. He doesn't have my ear. The wife doesn't respect him. And he goes in front of the masses pretending as if he got it together. He leads and he doesn't even know how to lead his own house. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. There's sickness falling on many a man because of his prideful ways, because he's said God on one hand, but said Lucifer on the other. There's many a man. I'm speaking about men right now. We'll get to women, but there's many a man that claims Lord, Lord, but God in the end is not going to know them. I told you to pick up the phone. The Lord says, I told you to write the letter. I told you to get on a plane long time ago. And you repeatedly did not want to make wrongs, right? Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The woman The woman is told from the time she is young, keep your legs closed, cross your legs. She gets in front of masses and she opens her legs. She acts as if her private area is the entrance to some sort of portal of righteousness and goodness. She doesn't acknowledge the one true God who has created her. She doesn't lean on the one true God. She doesn't confess sin and repent. She doesn't choose to live a righteous life despite all of the unrighteousness that has happened to her and around her. God will not be mocked. She is not a queen in a godless status. Her private area is not something that is so special and so unique and so absolutely wonderful that replaces our one true God. The experience, of course, is one that God allows to happen to create a human being or to pleasure a man who is her husband. And then she wonders why she becomes an enemy of the Lord, just as her boyfriend or lover is. And why is it that I'm on a fast track toward hell? And why have I experienced all this loss? She wonders, despite all the evidence that says that she has not lived and does not plan on living a holy lifestyle. So sickness embodies her. 
through her portal that she thought was so wonderful and so righteous. Sickness takes over in time. She is disrespected. She's called every name but her name by her boyfriend, her lover, and even her husband. Because some got all three. Those who are on the outside looking in, they watch. Some are deeply saddened by what's happening to her and others not so much. And she makes excuses while she puts on beautiful clothes, decorates her face, and stands before the masses. These are just examples. I mean, we could go on and on about examples from the person who's in your household or who you work with or who you fellowship with at the church to those who are in government in the entertainment industry and elsewhere. There comes a point where the consequences of sin increase in number. There comes a point where the consequences of sin take over and there is no more excuses. There is no more lying and covering up. The person becomes a great example Of what you don't do. That is ultimately. Why some of us get front seat. Front seats in looking at an enemy's destruction. That enemy becomes a subject that we study. That we learn and grow from. On what not to do. I thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube in Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. Blessings to you.